And that's how they sneak it in before every congregation at almost every mosque around the world is. I know of imams who have gone mosque to mosque saying, stop this nonsense. Yeah. Distributing a book on jihad in the English language. There are mosques in this city but on every Friday. Is next Jerusalem. year in Jerusalem doesn't mean I'm going to murder 100 Palestinians what to does, be there. does this mean? Oh God, before the congregation prayer, the imam stands up. Please defeat the kuffar and praise in Arabic for the defeat of the kuffar and the victory of Muslims over them. And give victory to Muslims over them. Kuffar means not non-believer. No, kuffar means Christians and Jews. When he, the Quran is very explicit. It says, speak the truth even if it hurts you, even if it damages your family. The truth is above all that has to be spoken. And because I speak the truth, I'm often told that I'm an apostate. Whoever bought this book, I have one thing to say, say to you, I'm sorry. Anybody who considers this scholarship truly, truly, really needs to learn the Islam from the true representatives, the scholars of Islam. However, let us go through this book a little bit and see how much Mr. Fateh really understood Islam. He so confidently and smugly, you know, challenges others on. I skimmed through it and first thing I was startled by was his mistranslations. Now, here is a person who's lived in an Arab country for 10 years. You expect better of him. How does he mistranslate, for example, just to give you examples. On page 321, he mistranslates Vilayat e Faqih as the supreme leader. That's not what it means. It's the rule of the jurist. He mis on page 103, he mistranslates Wazara as subordinates. It means ministers. On page 202, he mistranslates as safah as slaughterer. It means bloodshedder. On page 326, he mistranslates Yardi as O black slave. It means O my slave. On page 156, he mistranslates Futuh al-Buldan, Balazuri's famous book, as the origin of the Islamic State, whereas it means conquest of the nations. And I'd like to ask somebody in the audience, what does Munafiqeen mean? Anybody? Hypocrites. I mean, this is something that our children know. Mr. Fateh translates that as apostates. Clearly, Mr. Fateh does not even know the primary language of Islam, that is Arabic. I wonder what dictionary he uses. I propose that we take that dictionary away from him. <laughs> On page 321, he mistranslates Vilayat e Faqih as the supreme leader. That's not what it means. It's the rule of the jurist. He mis On page 103, he mistranslates Wazara as subordinates. It means ministers. On page 202, he mistranslates as safah as slaughterer. It means bloodshedder. On page 326, he mistranslates Yardi as O black slave. It means O my slave. On page 156, he mistranslates Futuh al Buldan, Balazuri's famous book, as the origin of the Islamic State, whereas it means conquest of the nations. And I'd like to ask somebody in the audience what does Munafiqeen mean? Anybody? Hypocrites. I mean, this is something that our children know. Mr. Fateh translates that as apostates. Clearly, Mr. Fateh does not even know the primary language of Islam, that is Arabic. I wonder what dictionary he uses. I propose that we take that dictionary away from him. But it wasn't just mistranslation, mistranslations, ladies and gentlemen. It was factual errors that bothered me. Now, I don't have lists to go through all of them. I have this much notes with me at home. And of course, in the interest of time, I did not bring all of them here. But let me share some of the factual errors that this man made in his book. For example, Surat Al-Ma'idah, Surat Al-Nisa, chapter 5, verse 3, he says, and before the Prophet died, he shared with the Muslims the last revelation he received from God. Today I've completed your faith for you. Now Mr. Fateh is so confident that this is the last verse of the Quran, of the, of the Quranic revelation, that he doesn't mention it once. He mentions it in page 20, in page 93, in page 110, in page 114, he page 264. The only problem Mr. Fateh is, this is not the last verse. This was revealed 81 days before Prophet ﷺ died. 
The last verse is 2, 281. That was revealed nine days before the Prophet died. Now this is uncontested among scholars. Surah An-Nisa chapter 5 verse 3 he says, And before the Prophet died, he shared with the Muslims the last revelation he received from God. Today I've completed your faith for you. Now Mr. Fateh is so confident that this is the last verse of the Quran, of the, of the Quranic revelation, that he doesn't mention it once. He mentions it in page 20, in page 93, in page 110, in page 114, he page 264. The only problem, Mr. Fateh, is this is not the last verse. This was revealed 81 days before Prophet ﷺ died. The last verse is 2, 281. That was revealed nine days before the Prophet died. Now this is uncontested among scholars. Another example. Mr. Fatih does not like Wahhabism. And he does not like the founder of Wahhabism, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. So what does he do? He connects the great uh, Indian scholar Shah Waliullah with Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. He says on page 49, Shah Waliullah left India for Arabia to perform the pilgrimage of Hajj. And during his two years in Hijaz and Najd, came in contact with Wahhab and joined forces with him. So Shah Waliullah joined forces with Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. In, uh, in page 49, in page 50, he goes on to say, Shah Waliullah was his disciple. Aside from the fact that there's absolutely no historical proof that they even met, let's take Mr. Fateh's words on this. According to you, Mr. Fateh, Shah Waliullah left for India in 1732. This, this is what he says in his book in page 50. And according to you, Mr. Fateh, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab started his militant reformist movement in 1744. Now the question is, how could Shah Waliullah join forces with Abdul Wahhab 12 years later when according to you, he was not even in the country? He was not even in the region. He gives another meaning to distant learning. He says on page 49, Shah Waliullah left India for Arabia to perform the pilgrimage of Hajj. And during his two years in Hijaz and Najd, came in contact with Wahhab and joined forces with him. So Shah Waliullah joined forces with Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab. In, uh, in page 49, in page 50, he goes on to say, Shah Waliullah was his disciple. Aside from the fact that there's absolutely no historical proof that they even met, let's take Mr. Fateh's words on this. According to you, Mr. Fateh, Shah Waliullah left for India in 1732. This, this is what he says in his book in page 50. And according to you, Mr. Fateh, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab started his militant reformist movement in 1744. Now the question is, how could Shah Waliullah join forces with Abdul Wahhab 12 years later when according to you, he was not even in the country? He was not even in the region. It gives another meaning to distant learning. Then, then Mr. Fateh rises and he shows how Sharia contradicts the Quran. He says, the fact remains that many Sharia laws were at variance with the Quran. Fine. Can you give us an example? He gives us an example in page 257. He says, if a divorced Muslim woman wishes to remarry her former husband, a Sharia law makes it mandatory on her part to first marry another man, have a voluntary divorce from him. This is called tahleel in the in Islamic law. This is not at variance with the, with the Quran, Mr. Fateh. If only you had read the Quran. Chapter 2, verse 230, what does Allah say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Allah says, فَإِن طَلَّقَهَا فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِن بَعْدُ حَتَّى Tahleel is there, it's given right there. How can it be at variance? He says, the fact remains that many Sharia laws were at variance with the Quran. Fine, can you give us an example? He gives us an example in page 257. He says, 
If a divorced Muslim woman wishes to remarry her former husband, a Sharia law makes it mandatory on her part to first marry another man, have a voluntary divorce from him. This is called tahleel in the in Islamic law. This is not at variance with the with the Quran, Mr. Fatah. If only you had read the Quran, chapter two, verse two thirty. What does Allah say? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say. Allah says, "Fain tanlaqaha fala tahlu lahu min baadu hatta tankeha zawjan ghairu." Tahleel is there. It's given right there. How can it be at variance? Then you have the contradictions. And subhanAllah, I have no idea how a person does this. He says one thing, and then a few pages later, he says completely something different. For example, let me give you an example. What, did Prophet ﷺ set up a political state or not? On page 2021, Mr. Fatah entitles his chapter 1 subheading as Muhammad, a head of the state or an apostle. So either he's a head of state or he's an apostle. Then he goes on to prove that he was in fact an apostle, not a head of state. He says, Muhammad Prophet was certainly, quote, certainly not sent to become a political leader, but rather was meant to be a head of religious community. In other words, Fatih wants us to accept him as an apostle. But then he forgets what he says uh, later on in the book, when he says, on page 21, he says, Muhammad the visionary and statesman, even in his dying days, was carefully molding a new people. Was he a statesman or not from God? Nobody knows, except Mr. Fateh. Mr. Fateh entitles his chapter one subheading as Muhammad, a head of the state or an apostle. So either he's a head of state or he's an apostle. Then he goes on to prove that he was in fact an apostle, not a head of state. He says, Muhammad Prophet was certainly, quote, certainly not sent to become a political leader, but rather was meant to be a head of religious community. In other words, Fatih wants us to accept him as an apostle. But then he forgets what he says uh, later on in the book, when he says, on page 21, he says, Muhammad the visionary and statesman, even in his dying days, was carefully molding a new people. So was he a statesman or not from God? Nobody knows, except Mr. Fatih. Then on page 21, Mr. Fateh says, Abu Bakr never set up an Islamic state, but an Arab state. Fine. After a while, Mr. Fateh changes his mind. And he says, and he claims on page 131, Abu Bakr, quote, proceeded to set up an Islamic state. Did he set up an Islamic state or not? Only Mr. Fateh knows. Then on page 21, Mr. Fateh says, Abu Bakr never set up an Islamic state, but an Arab state. Fine. After a while, Mr. Fateh changes his mind. And he says, and he claims on page 131, Abu Bakr, quote, proceeded to set up an Islamic state. Did he set up an Islamic state or not? Only Mr. Fateh knows.